So the transition in like the fall to winter on these grass lakes like Gunnersville here, really any lake that has a lot of hydrill, millfoil, eelgrass, things like this, there's always a transition between like mat fishing and then kind of outside edge grass fishing or fish schooling on shad, things like that. So when it comes to mat fishing, keep, I keep that pretty simple. I mean, really, if there's grass mats, I use just your typical, you know, hollow belly frog. Color wise, the fish can't see it great under the mat, so it doesn't make a huge difference, but this is just a hollow belly. And I usually, sometimes I throw a dark one, sometimes I throw a light one, just for those little glimpses they get of it. I'll just kind of alternate back and forth. I'm a big believer in they'll bite whatever, but they're hard to hook if you're not throwing the perfect color. They might kind of lose focus on it right when they try to get it. So if I miss a couple of fish, I might go to like a black and then if uh, vice versa, I'll use white if the black doesn't seem to be working. But set up on it, just typical, you know, heavy braid, 50 pound Yozuri braid. When I'm fishing mats, I use a, I like a 7.3 medium heavy normally when I'm fishing just a open, like a hollow belly frog. But when I'm fishing mats, like thick, thick grass, 7.3 mag medium heavy. This is the old faithful in my signature line with arc rods and it's just a little more stout rod get them out then when it comes to flipping flipping setup also same 50 pound braid and i like a zoom z crawl sometimes i'll go to a z hog it's uh i vary back and forth sometimes they won't i call it the flappy some the z crawl has a kicking action when it falls a z hog does not it's just a straight fall so i'll alternate back and forth and weight wise depending on how thick the grass is if it's really thick you might have to go up to an ounce and a quarter or an ounce and then as it starts to die off and gets a little thinner go down to like a three quarters maybe or something like that so pretty simple setup i got the tharp series here the gunnersville special just a heavy flipping rod 7-eleven and uh, it's your typical flipping setup, but you're in kind of more hydrilla and millful, not like Okeechobee style mats. So you don't need that extra heavy like you would there. But that is kind of, you know, early to mid fall when there's grass is still real thick. But as it starts breaking off, you get like more scattered grass. And a lot of fish won't be under the mats because there's just not many of them. They start falling apart and the fish will get on the outside edge, more like your winter time or pre-spawn grass fishing. When it comes to that, I always have a buzz bait until it gets too cold. This is a great bait for when it gets scattered and cover water. Once it gets down below 60, it's a little iffy, but uh, if the water, as long as it's still over 60, just a, it's a green fish tackle, toad toter buzz bait I designed with a horny toad on it. I throw a horny toad predominantly on a buzz bait, but in the fall, it's even better because it allows you to reel a little bit slower as that water cools down. So it's a great bait to cover water, but still a slow enough retrieve to not, uh, or those kind of cooler water bass can still get it. The uh, setup on this, same 50 pound Yozuri uh, Super Braid. And the rod on this, I actually designed this rod specifically for our buzz bait. This is a 7-1 heavy buzz burner rod. It's a heavy action, but it's got a slower bend to it. So when, you're, when one gets your buzz bait, you don't pull it away from them. You got enough to get them out of the grass or out of wherever, but the fish, uh, they, they have a little taper to the tip to be able to get the bait. So that's, uh, that's kind of my reaction rod when it comes to that. But then as it gets colder, that top water, that stuff, there's no mats left and there's you know, no top water fish to catch. Then I kind of keep it pretty simple. One of my favorite baits is a, just a small crankbait. This is a Yozuri 3DS SR. I'll alternate between the MR and the SR. This one goes about four feet, maybe five feet. And uh, it's a great bait for covering water. A lot of times in the fall, they're eating smaller bait. So it's a small finesse crankbait. And uh, it comes through the grass pretty well too. You want something you can snatch through that grass. A big bill tends to get hung up in it. So this is a little small, it's kind of like a square bill, but a little small round bill. And uh, set up on that, I usually throw it on 12 to 14 pound test. You can actually vary your line size with these small crankbaits. Rather than changing and putting a, you know, a shallower diving crankbait or a deeper diving, you could go from 10 to, let's say, anywhere from 10 to 16 pound test. And that'll vary the depth of that crankbait two to four feet. And uh, I like a, lot, a small reel, it's MGX. It helps you throw the small crankbait pretty well. And I use my Century Rod. This is actually a jerkbait rod. Designed it for jerkbait, but it's great for small crankbaits too. It's a 611 medium. It's in my Cobb series with Arc and it's a Century. So then the other two baits I use is uh, a Yozuri Rattling Vibe. It's a great bait. It's good from in the grass lake. This bait is literally good all summer, all fall, all winter, and all spring if it's got grass. It's a great bait to cover water, snatch out of the grass. You can fish at any depth you want. Uh, line size on this, I actually, I normally throw 16 pound test. I use Yozuri T7. 
a 16 pound test with it and it's a good line if you go too heavy the bait doesn't vibrate well, real well and if you go too small it'll get down in grass too much and you can't snatch it out or keep it up so you can vary it uh, a little bit but 16 is usually a good starting point i use my good vibes rod for that this is a 7.3 it's a fiberglass rod or a composite rod so it's got a little bend to it so when you hook one you don't pull the hooks out or when they uh, jump doesn't throw them off so so I, I recommend when you're throwing a rattling vibe any rattle bait it's a hard bait to land fish on so a good composite rod will keep more of those fish hooked and let you fish it more effectively through the grass and the other bait Pretty much any time I'm around grass, I have to have a jerk bait tied on. Jerk bait can be, it's a frustrating bait to fish in the grass sometime, but as it dies off in the fall and winter, it gets a little more sparse and it makes it easier to fish. You're trying to stay on the edge with it, but uh, as it gets a little more sparse, you can work it more effectively through it. It's got more gaps in it and it, uh, it, it's a good bait when it's a little tough it's like a finesse presentation to target that grass you can pause it some you don't you're not necessarily plowing through the grass with it because a jerk bait it doesn't it gets fouled up a little bit so you want to keep it above that grass and uh it'll target some fish that just aren't biting it's a it's a great way to catch them as it cools down and as it gets way colder like on later in the winter you know december january it still is a real effective bait because you can fish it any speed you want you're not just reeling it through the grass so you might have to alternate more pauses or less pauses depending on water temp but it's a good way to target fish no matter what the water temp as it cools down in the fall but the biggest thing is just looking at the water in the fall and figuring out what stage you think if, if the grass is still thick enough to have the fish up in it or if you think they're gonna be on the outside edge and kind of alternating back and forth till you figure out where that biggest group or the most population of fish in the lake are